Mm -hmm. My dad treated me like a princess. <laughs> when he came home, I'd go running to him and say, Here, here's your little sweetheart. <laughs> and he'd pick me up and whirl me around. And he's a big man in my eyes. He was six foot, but he was strong. A logger and a farmer. <laughs> and his mother read a lot of poetry to him when he was growing up. In fact, his middle name is Whitcomb, after uh, the poet. So she was a Southern girl with a nanny, and the nanny took good care of her, and she loved her like her mother. Her mother was a nurse, and uh, Sometimes nurses and school teachers can be kind of strict, and but her nanny was soft and Lovely. special. And so my grandma Nicholson, who was my dad's mother, treated her children that way. And he said they would sit at her knee every day while she quoted poetry or read to them out of books. So when I, we were little, we didn't have television, but we had a big radio, and it was during World War II, and so we would sing songs, bell-bottom trousers, coats of navy blue, <laughs> I love a sailor and he loves me too, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd get up and dance while I was playing, but my dad would do a lot of Stephen Foster type songs and uh, he would sing them. He had a good uh, baritone voice and he sang in a choir church and he could read music pretty well. So <laughs> he would, at night when we were through eating, we'd gather around in the front room and he would quote poetry and one of my favorites was the one with the, the guy that got chased by the bear up the tree and <laughs> the bear started climbing up and he was all scared, but it all worked out in the end, but that was such a funny poem for me. So anyway, he could quote poetry and he could sing songs and folk songs. And when we, we were go to the mountains and we'd be driving over these, he'd be driving off to the edge of the road and you could see straight down, I'd be on that side because my mother was scared to death of, of heights. So she would sit in the middle so she didn't see the drop off. But I could see it way over there and he'd be singing, when it's springtime in the Rockies, I'll be coming back to you. He'd be singing something like that, or you are my sunshine, mm -hmm. or, you know, he liked to sing and as he was driving. So, uh, and he was a spiritual man. He, <laughs> uh, sometime in his youth, he was not up to par as what he wished he had been. And so, when he decided to become a strong Christian and live like Christ-like attributes, he would get up every morning at 4.30 and read scriptures, wow. probably for an hour, and study. He knew what the, in the first Christian church where he belonged, he, uh, they had a Sunday school, and it was usually in the New Testament, and a lot about Paul, Paul's writings. And so he would study the New Testament a lot. And uh, then at 5.30, he'd go start the chores, milk the cows, feed them, get stuff ready to farm in the summer. And then the winter, he would just uh, worry about the chickens and the cows and the pigs and whatever else is out there. But uh, 
And then he always made breakfast for my mother and for us kids. My mother never got up early with us. She slept in, but he got up early, as I said, and she would get up later after we left for school. And we either had waffles or oatmeal. <laughs> and I still like both of those. So anyway, then in the evening, in the winter, he would, uh, we would go, we'd, he would say, it's time to read our scriptures. And at 9.30, we'd read scriptures, and then we'd say prayers. And then he'd take us into our bedroom, uh, fluff our pillows, and then he'd have a little prayer that we would say, he would say with us. And he did me, and then he'd do, go do Charles. And that's how we went to bed. In the summer, I got up early with him to go out and work on the farm because I like to be outside on the farm. So I'd get up at 4.30 and go help him irrigate. And then we'd come in at 8 o'clock for breakfast and then come back in when uh, my mother would pull the shade down in the kitchen. That meant uh, dinner was ready. And then we'd come and eat dinner and then <laughs> we'd eat dinner and then we'd rest my dad would say it's too hot to go out there and work now we'll go out at four so we'd go out at four and do some more irrigation type stuff or pull weeds and then we'd come back in and have bread and milk or soup it was our supper time and it was a lighter meal our heavy meal was at noon right he was often uh, president of PTA or uh, in the church they had elders and he might be, he would be the leader of that for a while. He was a leader and he was a, uh, he'd go around and visit people in the First Christian Church, kind of like what we call home teaching or ministry. And it wasn't, it didn't report to anybody that he just go where he felt like he should go. Uh, he was really good at math because he had to be, when you work with logs, you have to know the diameter and how to, how that works and how many lumber feet. And he knew how to do that. Uh, and he is well read. The funny thing he liked to do, we had a party line where oh. there would be about eight people and their, everybody's phone number rang differently. Like when somebody's rang once and then two little long, one long one and two short. Or it'd be uh, just the opposite or everybody knew everybody's signal. And if he wanted to know something, he'd He'd pick up the receiver and listen in to people's <laughs> conversations. <laughs> and my mother would be standing there, Walter, you shouldn't be doing that. And he'd put his hand over the cover so he wouldn't hear. <laughs> but everybody did it. You just knew that when you're talking on the party line, everybody's listening to you, so you better not say anything you wish you hadn't. <laughs> right. Uh, he loved music. And when I sang in the high school choir, we would have regional meetings, and sometimes in Burley, sometimes in Gooding, but he would drive there to hear me sing at the, at the end of the couple of days. They'd have a concert and... Sorry, <laughs> I need a stand. My hand gets tired, okay. Anyway, he would drive and probably would only take an hour now, but it took him at least two and a half hours to get to where we were. Wow. And he'd drive there by himself and drive, and I had to right, take the bus home, and then he'd drive back home by himself. So 
I always appreciated that about him. He always bought my mother something frilly for her birthday, like a pretty nightgown or a pretty slip. <laughs> And he took her out to dinner, and he was really sweet with her that way. Um, that reminds me, Valentine's. My favorite Valentine's Day ever was I was going to the Twin Falls Business College, and it was a warm day, and we had set up tables outside because we were selling stuff to make money. And... Uh, I had gone in to get something and come right back out, and the girl says, there's a man here, I think it's your dad, and he wants to see you. And I said, really, I wonder what he wants. So I walk over to him, sure enough, gave him a big hug. He says, I came here to take you out for Valentine's Day at the Rogerson Hotel. And that was a big deal. <laughs> The Rogerson Hotel was the nicest place you could take anybody back then in the 50s. Wow. White tablecloths, several silverware, and anyway, he picked me up. I asked, can I be excused to go with my dad? And they said, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> they were all excited for me to go. Anyway, that's my favorite Valentine's Day. It was spontaneous on my dad's part and he just wanted to be with me and I thought that made me feel so special. <laughs> mm. uh, when I joined the church it was hard for him because he and I sit, sat together at church and I would sing alto and he'd sing bass and he we liked to sing the hymns together like that. Right. So he he missed me and he was always kind of sad that I joined the LDS church till the end and then he got converted and but then he was too weak he said I'd get baptized but I just can't I I'm too weak to even walk now so anyway but it, Charles did his work for him and Charles said it was a good experience so it was good mm -hmm. <laughs> well he wasn't the MTC he did his work. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Keith baptized Charles, or Charles baptized Keith for him. And then Charles took, did the initiatory and endowment. Oh. So that was cool. Yeah. Uh, so I thought my dad walked on water. That's not what my siblings think at all. Uh, especially the ones that were from his first wife. They had been, uh, it was hard when they were a family because it was the depression and they had to live in meager things and just wasn't, as nice as when my mother and he were together. My mother absolutely adored him and she just stayed by his side all the time. <laughs> right. So, anyway, he was, in my eyes, he was a wonderful person. And uh, 